we're women, uh, we come together because we all choose to devote our lives to a life of prayer. When I uh, told some of my friends that I was considering entering religious life, entering a contemplative life, I got uh, some interesting responses. Uh, and one of the responses was, is you're, you're throwing your life away, you're throwing your career away, all that education, all that work, all that time that you spent building up your practice, you know, what's going to happen? And I have to say that once I felt the call, uh, there's just this pull of um, a prayerful life. And it's almost hard to describe. It's, uh, it's what I call mystery because I don't really know how to describe it, but I couldn't not do it. I was in Guatemala. I was one of the ones that founded the monastery there and uh, thought that would be kind of where I would be for a long time. And um, we have a, a custom on uh, New Year's Eve to have a, a prayer day. And so I was in my room just praying, you know, and um, it became very, very strong that I was being asked to bring the poor clothes to Cincinnati. And that, I mean, like, I'm not a kind of person that, you know, has ever had anything like that happen to me before. Um, I don't have that kind of experience, you know, usually with God, but uh, then I talked to my abbess and, and she said, well, you know, if this is really of the Spirit, we should, we should listen to this, you know, so let's take a month and we'll both pray, and you know, so we did. And then when we got back together, she said, I'm feeling that, you know, we should really at least maybe take some steps and see. So uh, I came from Guatemala, and it was the first Sunday of Advent of 1989. I had visited some of the other monasteries just telling my story, you know, because I was just like one person, you know, and it, usually it doesn't quite work like that. So it was a, quite a journey. I had met Diane and Anna Maria. I didn't really know them. I had only met them, you know, at their monastery once. We had a vision about Port Clares in Cincinnati, but not because we knew each other at all. You know, you can imagine there's a transition. I'm coming from Guatemala. They're coming from Philly, New York, trying to bring something new to birth. And yet we were all dealing with our own, you know, sadness of leaving. And so really it was the Eucharist each day that really, really cemented us together and our life of prayer. And then the support of the friars and, and the Franciscan sisters and, and the seculars. We had said earlier, oh, we don't, we don't want to build. You know, we were just trying to build our little community and the thought of, you know. But we looked and we looked. 14 months we looked for a place, could not find a place. The, the provincial called and I was kind of coordinating some of it. And so he said, you know, I can give you land. And so I said, you know, I, I think as much as that's such a scary thing, I think that's really maybe what we're being asked to do. So we did fundraising and planning at the same time, which is very stressful, you know. Then we'd meet with the architect from Monday to Friday, and then we'd go out and raise money and then meet with the architect. And we never didn't have enough money. I mean, it got really close. We never had to stop a project from beginning to end. So this is what happened, you know. We, we knew we needed a monastery, a place that people would recognize as a place of prayer. But we've been really blessed, as you know, with many, many good women who have followed us. and. Um, you know, they, they really see what, you know, a lot of our charism is hospitality to the Franciscan family and to anybody that comes. Mm -hmm. And everybody that's come has really seen that as what, you know, what we particularly think is special to us. Stepping away here to this place of peace and stillness and quiet uh, is really refreshing and really calming and really grounding. And, and only, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes from busy parts of Cincinnati. But it's very much like family life. It's, uh, we live together, we work together, we eat together, we play together, recreation, and um, also as part of a Franciscan spirituality tradition, it is that family atmosphere that is one of the draws uh, for religious life, for community life. 
Now we remember again in a special way in our prayers and our thoughts, our sisters in Yang Yang in South Korea. May the Lord God grant them the graces they need at this time. That is always my prayer almost every day. Lord, make my heart a little bigger, stretch a little bit so that the world can fit in, embracing, embracing the whole world. Once a year, we have we spent uh, we are raking leaves. The families is looking forward to that because it become a big family gathering for us. Us, we wear our with our rakes and hats, and with families, little kids with their very small rake. It's so cute. It's just so cute. It really, it's really a family. Big. We become big family. That is the, like sounds so very contrasting. We are in closure, but. But it's, there's a lot of ways we are, we are so much part and journeying together. There's so much avenue to, to answer God's call. And, and no worry. Mm -hmm. In a right time, you are called to serve. Yes. Yes. That's beautiful. Yeah. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. When I mention, the Claire's. There's many people that don't know that they're here. They don't ever know they exist in these woods. <laughs> right, because you can miss, you miss the entrance. You don't know yeah. it's there. But if people would find it, they would, it's a little piece of heaven up here. It, it's a place of uh, quiet, prayer, it's very peace. spiritual, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Peace. They're not closing themselves out from the world. They know what's going on in politics, you know, the, all of the disasters. They're very aware of the world. They pray for all the wants and needs. Yeah. You can share with them prayers that you'd like to offer. I don't pray with them like you do every morning, but if I would come, they, they make you feel welcome. They want you there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you never feel like you're intruding on their space. I think it's a happy, joyful place. It is. I always go away with something, something to get me through the day, just like Sister Anne said today. You know, wake up to something positive. It, it's good. It's a good place. Good morning, Port Clares. Most people contact us today. It's actually through email, website, that type of thing. The first uh, times that they come, they would be like in the guest area. Most of it would be like they'd enjoy, they join the community for prayers, for all our community prayer in chapel. Then when they would come for a longer time, they would live within the community, so they would really have a a full immersion experience of what our community life is like, what our prayer life is like, uh, you know, what our free and, and uh, personal time is like. We have a strong community life. Okay. We will put this one here. Uh, we will put a Doris Sedona here. Here. Yeah. Sometimes people, when they think contemplative communities, they think everybody off in a hermitage somewhere. Yeah, that wasn't what well, Anne did too. Yeah, yeah, it is. So it might be a second viewing. But um, usually, one of the things that's the hardest adjusting to is that you know you're living with you know, ten other people and uh, ten other personalities. Uh, and that's usually the kind of the crooks. <laughs> Many of the women who have come been with us for a time have remained friends of the community and you know they learn Franciscan values from being here and, and that continues with them. 
when I was on retreat in Traveler's Rest, South Carolina with our Port Claire sisters, uh, Sister Nancy directed my retreat. And so people can come there and make a retreat and they're either free to be totally left alone, if that's what they want, or they can join us for prayer. And at one point during the retreat, she says, you need a contemplative leisurely activity. And I said, what's that? <laughs> and she says something that like on a prayer day, it's a meditation, some people garden, um, I take pictures, some people walk in the woods, um, some people paint. Uh, do something artistic, uh, crocheting is popular around here. Um, so I affectionately call uh, my uh, photography of especially the nature around our monastery my contemplative leisurely activity, my CLA. Uh, I'm really happy with the results. Knowing that I'm with a group of women and their goal is the same as mine, to pray for the needs of the church, to pray for the needs of the world, to pray for individuals who need prayers, to pray for those who have no one to pray for them. Uh, then some of the nitty gritty things or the uncomfortable things about living a community life or family life are bearable because I know that we're all dedicated to the same thing. <laughs> Each one have joined. I'm going to get on We each get one mm -hmm. Canadian dime. Uh, but you do like that. Only you can see like that. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, mm -hmm. seven, eight. You have very many. But you do not have a choice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So you have seven. Oh, Luisa, you did? Oh. Okay, you chose this one. Okay, here. Yeah. <laughs> That is not normal, okay? okay. One, two, I love your borderline here. One, two, three, I'll four, do that. Five, In fact, I didn't throw my education away or my career away or anything. So I might be a contemplative sister here at the monastery with no work outside the monastery grounds, but yet I can still use my education and my uh, background in order to help us live our way of life here.